You're inside this beautiful brand new stadium. Rich, a year ago, we would have been outside. I am thankful, Kevin, for the <laughs> assignment. I know that. <laughs> it is very comfortable inside. We're talking about it on the way over here today. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not safe outside. Well, the Vikings won the toss. They've elected to take the second half kickoff, so they defer, and the Colts will receive a look at Adrian Peterson with a brace on the knee. Jordan Todman, along with Josh Ferguson, are back for the Colts. And to kick off for the Vikes, Kai Forbath. And away we go, Indianapolis, in Minneapolis against the Minnesota Vikings. Todd Minnell bringing out a former Viking. And he is hauled down on the play by Robinson, Edmund Robinson, 26-yard return. This takes us to quarterback Andrew Luck. A three-time Pro Bowl quarterback, and Rich having the best season of his career. Yeah, he's really played well despite a lack of protection. I mean, I, he has by far the most disruptive throws of, of any quarterback in the league this season. The thing I like about him, Kevin, his eyes are always downfield. His last read is the pass rush. Vikings open up in base, first and ten. This is Gore with the Doyle block and a nice tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Linval Joseph, they're going to give him a gain of a yard out to the 26-yard line. Running over the left side, that's Costanzo. It's the right side of concern. LaRaven Clark, first NFL start. He is a rookie. In fact, three rookies, the center, the right guard, and the right tackle. A lot on the plate of luck. And there is the great Frank Gore, the number eight all-time leading rusher in the National Football League. In fact, we've got two future Hall of Famers in this one, Gore and Peterson. Second down and nine. Gore finds a gap and finally brought down by Anthony Harris in the secondary, close to a first down. He has taken the plays of Harrison Smith. What a defense for the Minnesota Vikings. Griffin is on the line, eight sacks, but he, Joseph, and Daniil Hunter come off the bench. He, they're just terrific. There's Anthony Barr. He has got a couple sacks. And in the secondary, as we mentioned, it's Anthony Harris taking the place of the inactive Harrison Smith, the leading tackler for the Vikings. G, an ankle injury, missing today, third and one. And they go right ahead with Gore, stopped in the secondary, hit by Harris with his second tackle. It's a gain of four and a first down to the 37-yard line of Indy. When's the last time the Colts started a game, Kevin, with three straight runs? You know, you, you mentioned all the changes up front. They've got three rookies playing on that right side. They're going to have to help them. I think you do that by leaning on the run game a little bit more. This is a top-scoring defense for Chuck Pagano now in his fifth season for Indy. Number 10 in the NFL, first and 10. Luck, Gore, Greenway tries to bring him down and does. Long time Minnesota Viking allowing no gain in the play. They stay at the 37. I really like Chad Greenway. Enjoyed our conversation with him on Friday. You know, he talked a little bit about Mike Zimmer's philosophy on defense. I mean, it's all about stopping the run and getting after the quarterback. And they do that as well as any team in the league can. You look at their defensive line, 30 sacks already this season. Last week they got Blake Bortles four times in Jacksonville. Second down 10. With a handoff right here, not a whole lot of space to run. And he's out to the 39-yard line with the gain of two on the play. Well, you look at the scouting report. Obviously, the strength of this offense is the play of Andrew Luck. He's been steady behind a very inexperienced offensive line that's had way too many changes. You look at the Vikings, their defense, their pass rush. Kevin, going back to the days of the Purple People Eaters, these guys can still get after the passer. If there's a weakness right now, it's probably their run defense. 16th in rushing. They give up a little over 100 yards a game on the ground. Four in the secondary. Turbin, who carried the last time, remains third and eight. Luck, and he's got his crossing receiver right there. T.Y. Hilton by midfield. Brought down in the play by Munnerlin. Pick up a 12 on third and eight. It's a Colts first down. 
Well, this is the matchup they want. Moving around their best receiver, T.Y. Hilton, getting him inside on the Vikings' third best cover corner, and that's Captain Munderland. Munderland's better. He's a physical corner. He struggles a little bit with guys that have speed and quickness. I anticipate seeing a little bit more of T.Y. Hilton in the slot today against this Vikings secondary. Hilton comes in number two and receiving yards in the National Football League. He has now 79 catches on the year. They'll take a breather first and ten. Look, here comes Robinson. Held off. It's Jack Doyle. The tight end down to the 37-yard line. Hit by Harris. Whacked in the play by the linebacker Kendricks. A pickup of 12. Down to the 38 of Minnesota. Well, we know Andrew Luck likes to utilize the tight ends in the offense. Right in his, it's a directly in his vision. And I always say you throw the ball to the tight ends. It's the quickest route to the end zone right down the middle of the field. And Doyle has been reliable and steady this season for the Colts. No Dante Moncrief today. Out with a hamstring. First and ten. Gore is in. Opening drive of the game. This is Frank Gore, the former San Francisco running back for ten years and no gain on the play. Hit by a couple on the play, including Robison, and initially it was Linval Joseph. Well, if you, if you keep an eye on first and ten is a very high percentage. You study this defense of safety blitz. You see Anthony Harris. He's creeping down there. They're not going to let the Colts run the football on the early downs. If they have to commit an extra safety down around the line of scrimmage, they will do that. Rich, the volume probably changes for this young offensive line for the Colts, correct? No question, Kevin. And they have to be very protection conscious with this right side. Second down and 10, ninth play of the drive. They try to hold him off, going deep and looking for Hilton, who is tried for stride. In the secondary, Xavier Rhodes, a guy that you like a lot. It's incomplete, and it's third and 10. Well, Xavier Rhodes, Kevin, he's a terrific corner. He's got the long arms that you like. This is a good matchup because T.Y. Hilton has the speed and the quickness to get up and really close that cushion on those corners. But the Colts like to take shots down the field, and when they do, it's usually in the direction of T.Y. Hilton. Still just four in the secondary for Minnesota, third down and ten. The Colts have converted third and one and third and eight on this drive. Turbin in will offer the block. Time for Luck. Needs the 28. And he may have slid too early, Rich. He slides at the 32 yards shy of the first. But they do get eight, and they do get into field goal range on their first possession. Well, the Vikings can't let Luck out of the pocket. This defense has been hurt by quarterbacks who run with the football the last couple weeks. He's going to be short. He's down right where that thigh and leg first touch the ground it's not where he winds up it's where he initially goes down and gives himself up Lemur made sure that he was down here is a 48 yard field goal try by future hall of famer adam vinatieri the most accurate field goal kicker since 2014 a 48 yard try to put the colts on top and he does with about nine to play in the first Eighth time this season, Luck and the Colts have gotten points on their opening drive. 9-0-1 first quarter. Andrew Luck on that drive, he'll hit for 12, and he got Doyle for 11. They get the 48-yard field goal by Adam Vinatieri. And they came out, Kevin, they ran the football, and that's what they have to do. They have to stay committed to running the football against this Vikings front seven. And McAfee will kick off to the number one kickoff return man in the NFL, Cordero Patterson. He'll leave it in the end zone and out to the 25-yard line with the first and 10 for the Vikings. And here comes Adrian Peterson. Well, Kevin, he's missed the last 11 games, so I think the Vikings have to be strategic in terms of how they utilize him today. I wouldn't be surprised to see them come out and fake the ball to him on first and 10 and throw a shot down the field because you know the Colts are going to commit extra defenders to the line of scrimmage. They don't want AP to get started here today. He returned to practice this week. He's open to play for Green Bay at the Green Bay game on Christmas Eve after surgery on September 22nd. He comes back a little bit early. Bradford under center, first and ten. With Thielen in motion, it's Peterson. We're in the brace on the right knee, grabbed on the play, hit by a ton, including Antonio Morrison, the rookie, and a gain of two up to the 27-yard line. Well, David he had, Perry got him too. Excuse me, Kevin. He had the lateral meniscus surgery September 22nd. He's wearing that very light titanium brace on his right knee. Running backs hate wearing the brace, but. 
I think it makes sense when you consider just how soon he's decided to play since that surgery. Hunford with a second down and eight. Outside they go to Peterson. And he was hit by Darius Butler and picks up a meager yard up to about the 27-yard line on the play for Adrian Peterson, a former MVP, a four-time rushing champion in the NFL. And remember, Kevin, when he was playing early in the season, North Turner was calling plays. And yes. now you have a new play caller and Pat Shermerson. Things have changed. Some of the ver ver verbiage and terminology. So they have to be smart, strategically smart with how they decide to utilize AP today against the Colts. Asiata is the running back, third and seven. They won't go. Five in the secondary for the Colts. And underneath they go, Rudolph makes the grab and catching him, the rookie T.J. Green. Playing with the bad ankle, only a gain of two. Shy of the first down, a punting situation. Three and out for Bradford in the Viking offense. Well, a good start for the Colts on defense. Interested to see, Kevin, how the Vikings would decide to start the game with Adrian Peterson. Got a very warm reception, but we're going to have to see what he's like on that knee that was surgically repaired September 22nd. Jeff Watt, a little hesitation there. He's having the best season of his career. Deep back is Chester Rogers on a bounce, and he finds a little bit of space. Coming on the side, looking for a block. He got it from Tubman and taken down by the punter himself. Jeff Locke, a return of 30 on a 52-yard punt. 3-0 Colts, 719 first. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Cricket Wireless, something to smile about. And by Crest, healthy, beautiful smiles for life. Colts took their opening kickoff, marched down to a 48-yard field goal, three and out for the Vikings, second possession for Indy from their 48. After a 30-yard punt return by rookie Chester Rogers, first and ten. Quick throw, Gore outside, he'll dance a bit right there with, that's about as old as him, that's Terrence Newman, no gain on the play. Rich, let me ask you about the words coming out of that cold locker room last week after that tough loss against Houston. Well, Kevin, I think the players were not only disappointed, but I think they were embarrassed by their home loss last week. Really in a must-win situation against the divisional team, the Houston Texans. T.Y. Hilton came out and said we laid down in the home loss. Robert Mathis, another one of the leaders on the defensive side of the ball, said we're not the strongest team mentally right now. So I think this team will come out and respond to some of the criticism they heard last week from their fans. Second down and ten, Vikes were in the nickel and by midfield goes Gore, hit on the play by Joseph on a gain of two for Indy. Well, the Colts have to be smart, kid. We talked about the, the challenges that they have and the changes that they've had up front with their offensive line. This is a very good Vikings defense. They have to be able to run the football with Frank Gore. And, and, and be able to get the ball out quick, the short and intermediate game. That's really what you're going to see from Andrew Luck today. I think for the Vikings, they have to be able to tackle the quick game. You know, this is, Luck's not going to hold the ball for very long behind that injured offensive line. And again, the Colts are missing three of their top six offensive linemen today. Third and seven. Turbin is in. A block by Clark. Here comes Luck. Downfield, he's got Hilton. And he's got the first down, brought down by Harris inside the 20 to the 17 of Minnesota. Hilton downfield, another big catch, 31-yard pickup, first down Colts. Well, watch what happens to the right tackle. He's going to get walked right, Clark, he gets walked right to the back of Andrew Luck by Hunter, but it's Luck's mobility, his escapability, his, his ability to keep his eyes down the field and find a, find a wide open T.Y. Hilton. That's a tough assignment, Kevin, for Anthony Harris. Got to cover all day with a mobile quarterback like Luck. And again, normally they have Harris and Smith back there, but he's out. First and ten. Alexander is coming to secondary with a quick handoff here to Gore, who plies his way down to about the 14-yard line, Rich on a gain of four. You know, I thought it was interesting when we sat down with Frank Gore last night, Kevin. He talked about the challenges that he has as a running back playing behind an offensive line where there's been so much changes. You, know, you don't have that chemistry with the offensive line. He said the thing that he can't do as well as anticipate. 
You know, he doesn't see that. You don't see it as cleanly when you have different combinations up front that haven't had the communication or time to work together. Second down, six. This is Todman, who is brought down on the play by Anthony Harris. Todman with a gain of four. Like we said, spent a season with the Vikings back in 2012. Hit by Carr. Tackled right there to the 10. And they have to find some creative ways to manufacture some yards on the ground. You can't just keep handing it the ball to Frank Gore. How about the ball control right there by the Colts early on? Well, the tempo has been terrific, Kevin. They're getting in and out of the huddle. They're challenging this Vikings defense. Third and two. Throws is a dart down to Chester Rogers. The tackle made by Rhodes. He gets to the two. Pickup of eight. First and goal to go. Indianapolis. Kevin, you mentioned the injury to Dante Moncrief. Other players are going to have to step up. As we talked with Luck last night, he said one of those players is going to be Chester Rogers. Just runs a little angle route. He thought it was interesting that Luck said last night, he said, I think we're going to surprise some people with the play of our offensive line. He was pretty conf confident with the way this, these five young guys would play up front. Gore in, first and goal. It's Gore. The fake and outside, the drop. Did he get in? It was Allen. Incomplete is what they call it right now. And there's a look at Dwayne Allen, who had three touchdown receptions a couple weeks ago, Monday night in the Meadowlands against the Jets. Question is, does he actually have possession? This happened so quickly. I don't know that he does. I think as, I he, think as he he's kind of grasping for the ball, Anthony Harris comes in there and smartly strips it out. It was ruled incomplete on the field. No challenge flag has come from the Indy sideline. Eighth play of the drive, second down goal. Luck, low and uncatchable for Hilton. Boy, that's a throw, Kevin, that Andrew Luck rarely misses. He's got a wide open T.Y. Hilton on a little Omaha route, a quick out against Xavier Rhodes. He's got him if he just hits him. Well, you can't miss that throw in that part of the field. As we said, Luck is having a career best 63 percentage completion mark. But coming off his second lowest rated game of 2016. Didn't practice on Wednesday because of a right shoulder issue. Third and goal at the three on the Colts' second possession. Luck incomplete. Looking for Hilton. No yellow on the field. Munnerlin was there among many for the Vikings in the secondary. Well, that's the matchup they want. Munnerlin, T.Y. Hilton on Munnerlin. I think it's pretty good coverage by the slot corner. So, Rich, the Colts had it first and goal at the three, and they throw it three straight times. Let's talk about it, Kevin. Good red zone teams have the ability to run the ball in that part of the field. So, here they go on Adam Vinatieri once again. He'll try a 21-yard field goal. He'll turn 44 in a couple weeks. He nails that one flag on the play with the field goal good and 3-0-2 to play in the first. I think it's on... The Vikings. Well, that's going to be a, you got Linville Joseph, I think, jumps over the center. Unsportsmanlike conduct, leverage, defense, number 98. Half the distance to the goal, automatic. First what down. a gigantic, gigantic penalty against the Vikings. Well, look at Linville Joseph. What, what he tries to do is he tries to jump over the center, and he actually makes contact with him. That is a penalty. We saw Shea McClellan of the New England Patriots Last week, Kevin, he timed it up and he jumped over the center, but he didn't touch him. If you make contact with a defenseless player in that situation, it is a penalty and a costly one at that. So the call to threw three straight times from here before have brought in a defensive lineman. David Perry is the fullback for Gore. First and goal. Blocked by Perry. Gore tries to carve his way in. And... They say he is short. Second down and goal. Joseph there at the bottom of the pile. Griffin getting up two, and Gore could not wiggle in. Well, Everson Griffin made a terrific play. He sheds the blocker. And 
He's the one that creates the penetration that stops Gore in the hole. The Colts have taken out their defensive lineman. This would be as the fullback. This would be a bad spot, Kevin, for Andrew Luck. I mean, you only need a foot here for Andrew Luck just keeping himself. Turbin is in. He gets the call on second down and goal and pushes it through. And the Colts have scored a touchdown on a one-yard touchdown run by Robert Turbin. All set up on a 30-yard punt return by Rodgers. And the penalty called on Linval Joseph on jumping over the center. Well, just good movement at the point of attack. Look at Kelly, the center. Does a terrific job creating a hole on the backside for Robert Turbin. Now Vinatieri will try the extra point. And it's 10 to nothing Colts who have made a very loud and distinct noise here in the Twin Cities. 2.22 to play in the first. NFL fans, order your holiday gifts from NFLShop.com today and get free shipping at the official store of the NFL, NFLShop.com. With Rich Gannon, Kevin Harlan, 10 nothing Colts. Turbin the one yard touchdown run, the penalty on Joseph hopping over the center. And two possessions for Indy Rich and two scores. Yeah, this is getting to be a situation, Kevin, where it's kind of a critical drive for the Vikings to get back in this one. And Patterson will let it go over his head, and it'll be a touchback to the 25-yard line. Pretty important early game drive coming up here for Bradford and Peterson. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Garmin Fitness. Let's beat yesterday. And by Verizon. It's always a great gift on Verizon. The Stone Arch Bridge over the Mississippi linking St. Paul and beautiful Minneapolis. First and ten. Bradford fake to Peterson. By the tight end and outside they go. That's Charles Johnson. He's hit on the play by Melvin. And it's a gain of 17, and it's a first down to the 42. Well, you look at the Minnesota offense, Kevin, the accuracy of Sam Bradford right now. It's the best in football. The weakness has been the running game. We'll see what happens with a healthy, I should say, Adrian Peterson back in the lineup. We don't really know where he's at health-wise. The defense of the, of the Colts, I wish I could find a positive right now, Kevin. Not a lot of positives. The weakness has been their run defense. They gave up 185 on the ground last week to the Houston Texans. On that first down, carry, rookie, Florida. Fourth round pick, Antonio Morrison makes the stop on Peterson, allowing just a gain of a yard, Rich, to the 43. And Kevin, I mentioned the run defense of the Colts. That, that really let them down last week. They couldn't hold up against Houston's offensive line in the rushing attack. Gave up 185 yards on, on the ground. And so you, you got to think that offensive coordinator Pat Shermer wants to lean on this running game a little bit today with Adrian Peterson back in the lineup. Right now they got McKinnon back there. This is the dead last rushing attack in the NFL. Second down and nine. In the pistol, this is McKinnon. And shoved out of bounds by Akeem Ayers. It is a gain on the play of two. Let's go to New York, and here's James Brown. A big play leads to this. Yeah, off a 44-yard completion to Jeremy Macklin, Alex Smith. Sees nobody open and decides to take it in himself. From 10 yards out, Kansas City is up early, 14-0. Back to Kevin and Rich. Of all the elite teams in the NFL with their quarterbacks, that may be the least talked about quarterback in Alex Smith at Kansas City. Kevin, he doesn't make very many mistakes. That's what makes Alex All Smith stars. perfect for the Chiefs. Offense number 14, five-yard penalty, still third down. Stephon Diggs will pick that up. He's their top receiver with 78 receptions. Now it's third and 13 for the Vikes. Vikings have had a difficult time, Kevin, throwing the ball down the field. You mentioned Stefan Diggs. He's a playmaker. He leads the team with 78 receptions. To find a way to stretch the field more with Stefan Diggs. With Asiata in, Bradford going deep. He went deep a couple times last week. It's caught, but on the dot, dropped by Thielen, who's having a career year with the coverage on the play by Melvin. And another possession and another punt coming up for Minnesota. You know, Adam, I, I, Kevin, I really like this Adam Thielen. The problem is he doesn't give Sam Bradford any space on the sidelines. You've got to be three or four yards off the boundary. This is the margin for error for the quarterback there is virtually nil. 
you got to give him a little bit more space when you run the go route. Second punt coming up for Jeff Watt. They had a 30-yard punt return by Chester Rogers, who's a rookie free agent out of Grambling. The first time he hauled it in here late in the first quarter. They get it off to Watt. And he sends it off to the side. Yeah, they're going to keep it outside the numbers right now. Gets a bounce and a roll down to about the 17-yard line. 44-yard punt by Watt. The Colts are on the ropes. So are the Vikings. Two teams desperate for a win on CBS. Two possessions for Indy, two scores. Third possession right now for the Vikings. Three and out, four and out. First and ten Colts. With Gore in the backfield and a block by Doyle. He goes inside and he's hit and brought down by Rhodes after a gain of five. Slithering his way up to the 22-yard line for the Colts. That's the end of the quarter. Turbin with a one-yard touchdown run. Colts on top will return to Minneapolis after these messages. Andrew Luck has been using that football. We can practice, hasn't he, Rich? Yeah, look at that thing broke in, Kevin. They, they like him. They don't like him new out of the box, that's for sure. It's a second down and five beginning the second quarter, and we have somebody moving. False start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Rookie Joe Haig from the state of Minnesota. Well, you look at the numbers so far in the first quarter, Kevin. That talk about ball control. Indianapolis, 22 offensive plays. The Vikings just seven. How about the time of possession? That's a big story. You know, you've got this running back and Adrian Peterson. You're trying to find some rhythm offensively, and he's spending most of the first half sitting on the sidelines watching Andrew Luck and this Colts offense. With a second down and 10, this is Gore. Nice tackle made right in there by Eric Kendricks, who led the team in tackles a season ago, allowing a gain of three, and he's up to the 20-yard line. There are not a lot of explosive runs at this point in his career for Frank Gore, but he is still very capable of banging away at a defense if he gets enough carries. He's an explosive runner with a strong lower body, accelerates on con contact. He just told us last night, he said, I, I just never know in this offense, you know, how many touches I'm going to get. I think they got to keep feeding him the football on the early downs. Third down seven. Turbin in. Blocked by Doyle, the tight end, and he goes for Rodgers across the middle. With the coverage on the play by Xavier Rhodes. Here comes a punt now for Indy. First punt of the day after getting a 48-yard field goal on their first possession. And a one-yard touchdown run for Turbin on their second. And deep back, Marcus Sherrills. He didn't play last week because of a rib injury. And the top punter in the NFL, Pat McAfee, will let it fly for Indianapolis. He's as good as there is in the league. Sherrills waving his arm, wants the fifth catch, and that's what he's given at his own 37. A hang time of 4.78 with a 43-yard punt. Sherrill's hauling it in. Adrian Peterson's day so far for the Vikings. Well, Kevin, not a lot to talk about, but not a lot of opportunities. Just two rushes for three yards. They threw a ball in the flat. And, you know, it's tough to anticipate what he'll be able to do with that surgically repaired right knee because he just doesn't have a lot of practice time in. Just a couple practices this week with the Vikings. Tore the meniscus in that right knee, September 18th against Green Bay. With a first and 10 for Sam Bradford outside he goes. Rudolph the tight end, and he's hit by Rashawn Melvin for a gain of five. He's up to the 43. Here's James Brown in New York. Fourth time is a charm. That's right, JB. Fourth and goal. Andy Dalton takes the quarterback sneak for the one-yard touchdown. 10-3, Cincinnati is up over Pittsburgh. Since you will love nothing better. Back to Kevin Harlan. James, thank you. Here's a quick handoff, and it goes to Adrian Peterson, who corkscrews his way for perhaps a yard. Hit by a pile in there, including T.J. Green. We're going to call it a gain of a half yard, Rich, and no more for AP. You know, I thought it was interesting. Matt Asiata, the other running back, was sick on Fridays, so Adrian Peterson got a lot more reps with the first-team offense, Kevin. It may, it may have been those reps that really opened the eyes of Pat Shermer, the offensive coordinator, Mike Zimmer, 
to the fact that maybe AP was ready to play today and not next week against the Packers. Five in the secondary, third down and five. Here's Bradford on a quick slide incomplete. And they were going that time for Diggs. And the coverage on the play by Morris. It's incomplete. It's fourth and five. Here is the third consecutive punt in three possessions for the Vikes. You know, it's interesting, Kim. They look out of sync offensively, and you have to ask yourself, is, the, is it the fact that they're trying to get Adrian Peterson some touches and involved in an offense? You know, here's a guy that hasn't played since week two. Yeah, it's all about timing, isn't it, Rich? Really, when you talk about hitting the hole, reading that hole, seeing where the opening develops. Locked to punt again. Rodgers is back, already has a 30-yard punt return in his hip pocket today. Chasing and running, and he'll hold on to it with a hang of 4-8. That's why the coverage is so good. 51-yard punt, 12-55 in the first half. All running back Frank Gore was selected as one of the eight finalists for the Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award, which honors NFL players who exemplify outstanding sportsmanship on the field. The winner will be announced on February 4th, one of the real pros we've come across, huh, Rich, in our career in the NFL? My Kevin, goodness. he is the real deal. With the offset eye after the punt, first and ten, Doyle the block and picking and poking his way is Gore. Hit by a couple on the play, including Joseph, and he picks up three. He's the eighth all-time leading rusher. Now, you would think that I could ask Rich Gannon about anything, right? And I asked him, what, that, what was that bridge we just saw? I gave you ago? bad information. And I feel bad, part. I said from St. Paul to Minneapolis. That was wrong. I think it's... I know it's Minneapolis to Minneapolis. <laughs> I, have, I haven't been over that bridge enough. You live here. You've raised your family here. I, couldn't get, it, I couldn't get us from the hotel to the stadium this morning. <laughs> So we walked, we walked four blocks. <laughs> Second down and seven. <laughs> Out of the backfield, Turbin. Luck, Doyle, all oh, reading it well and sealing it off. Eric Kendricks limiting him to a gain of five. Rich just beyond their own 15-yard line. This offensive line, Kevin, is hanging on. And you, know, you look at Jack Doyle, he's really come on the last year and a half. He does whatever is asked of him. As a result, his production has really spiked this season, second on the team with 48 receptions. They do a good job of moving him around in this offense. Luck today with the 34th different offensive line that he has had in his five years in the NFL. Boy, that has had a lot of moving parts. Here's a third down and two. That is insane, Kevin. It's also dangerous. And we'll talk more about that on a quick slant. It's the former college basketball player at Miami, Swope. Pulls it in on third and two, picks up seven. He goes to the 23 roads, makes the tackle. He's really just learning how to play the position, Kevin. Just runs a little slant route. He's, he's going to have to learn to be an inline player, but he's very athletic, and he's got some speed. They separate him from the line of scrimmage. Terrence Newman made the stop. First and ten. Fake to Gore. And the pass to Gore. And Kendricks is right there, but look at he may have acquired the first down with the run. Nice patience by Luck. Gain of eight on the play. They'll mark him just shy at about the 33. Well, tomorrow on CBS, an Oprah Winfrey special event. The last interview and final farewell of First Lady Michelle Obama from inside the White House. Oprah and the First Lady. That's tomorrow at 8. 7 Central, only CBS. They love their Vikings. Second and one. Turbin in. Quick slant caught by Rodgers, working on Rhodes, and takes it beyond the 40 to the 41, has the first down, picks up nine. On the quick hitter, getting Rodgers involved early and often. Well, these Colts wide receivers are going to have to win at the line of scrimmage versus these bigger corners of the Vikings who play a ton of press man-to-man -man technique. Hilton, not a big player, not a bigger receiver. You know, the Viking offense has been struggling. The defense, number two in points allowed, number two in yards allowed. Arguably the best overall in the NFL. First and ten. Luck with Gore in the backfield. They got a nice block up front from Haig, and it's incomplete. The pressure was coming on the play, and the ball was tipped on the play. As he hits his center right in the helmet. Flag downfield, Rich, at the 45.
Kelly, the rookie, got it right in the ear hole. The first round pick out of Alabama. Two there flags two are down. On the play, both by the defense holding. Defense number 29. That penalty is declined. Holding. Defense number 23. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. It was on Newman, and they declined the one on Rhodes. Rhodes, you think uh, Rich gets a little handsy in that backfield? He does, Kevin. He had four penalties last week, including an unsportsmanlike penalty against a game official. But he does. He's. He's a physical player, but he likes to use those long arms and those hands to disrupt the, the timing and release of receivers. The challenge that Rhodes is going to have today is against you know, guys like Chester Rogers and T.Y. Hilton, who have that good blend of speed and quickness. With a first and ten handoff, here comes Gore. Following a head block, and he steamrolls him down to the 49. The tackle made on the play by Johnson to James in New York. No shame in trickery if it works. Yeah, a little trickery never hurt anybody. Here you're going to see the flea flicker. Marcus Mariota throws it up. Rashard Matthews goes up and over Eric Berry. And that set up a four-yard touchdown run by Derrick Henry. Tennessee is coming back. 14-7. KC is up. Kevin and Rich. What do you think of the Tennessee Titans? They're a good football team, Kevin. They're well coached. The former Minnesota Viking, Mike Malarkey, is their head coach, and he's done a terrific job. Right with the young quarterback. With a second down and four, here's Gore. Hit initially in the defensive backfield by Harris, and he plows into him, close to a first down, gain of about three to the 44. Just watch Frank Gore here, Kevin, at the end of this run. Watch him just continue to churn those legs. Just watch. He just keeps driving. He's a powerful man. He's hard to bring down. The other day he passed Tony Dorsett and they wanted to give him the game ball after he the game. He didn't want it. He didn't want the game ball. He is such a selfless player and, you know, he's a terrific leader. He, he brings some attitude and some toughness, not only to that huddle, but to this entire football team. Rich, you really respect those kind of guys, those real pros, huh? Yeah, I think he's got a challenge, Kevin. You know, a lot of these young players trying to teach these young players the importance and the meaning of playing this football game with great passion. Here's Swope on first and ten. He is brought down in the secondary by Rhodes. A catch and run of 16. He had only caught ten passes coming into today. Two big ones already this afternoon. Yeah, he just gets the matchup they, they want on the inside linebacker, Eric Kendricks. He looks in, in the backfield, and that's just enough to create the separation that Luck needs. It's interesting how the NFL, Rich, is going after these former basketball players to play the tight end position. Well, they understand leverage, Kevin, and they're very good in tight spaces, and that's what a guy like Swope could do. Turbin in, first and 10, 27. And Luck going for Swope, and he's got the touchdown! What a pass! 27-yard touchdown pass. And Swope has his first career touchdown in the NFL. 16 to nothing. The Colts over the Vikings. You watch the tight ends. They've got both of them in the middle of the field. And they're going to have Dwayne Allen go down the middle of the field. And that gets Swope the matchup that he wants on Chad Greenway. It's just a fight to the end zone. Good throw, good anticipation by Andrew Luck. So Andrew Luck, in the midst of a career year, throws his 26th touchdown pass. The extra point by Vinatieri makes it 17 to nothing. The Colts. This is going to surprise some people around the National Football League. Our clock: 7:16 in the second quarter. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Amazon Prime. Get free two-day shipping on millions of items. McDonald's. I'm loving it. And by Verizon. It's always a great gift on Verizon. Okay, Carmen San Diego, where's that? Since you're Mr. Geography, where's that? It's Valley Fair. No, I'm just teasing for the, for the locals. Oh, no, that's the Mall of America. Yeah. I'm trying to give you bad information. You just won't take it. I know. NFL. Oh, and he slips him. Yeah, he's firing his way up the sideline. Brought down by Christopher Milton, who holds on for dear life. Flag was thrown late. And it may have been on the Colts. It was thrown on that sideline where Jerome Boger and crew were watching and officiating. 38-yard return as it stands right now for Patterson. 
after the player was out of bounds. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Kicking team, number 28. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that's his former teammate, Todd McClade, for the Vikes. And uh, oh, we got somebody else. Nonetheless, it's against the Colts, 7-10 second. On November 11th, the Vikings hosted a Cops versus Kids flag football tournament. It was all a part of the Trust to Protect campaign, which is designed to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the community. Well, with a 17-0 hole, they've got Peterson in still, still in the game, Rich, and a first and 10 with the penalty puts him at the 50, and here comes the quarterback. Bradford is going deep, and a great catch made by Rudolph. Finally tackled on the play in the linebacking core by Jackson. A 28-yard lasso at the 22 and a first down for Minnesota. Well, I love the play design. You fake the ball to Adrian Peterson. That gets the attention of all those linebackers. And Bradford makes a terrific throw down the middle of the field to his tight end, Kyle Rudolph. Can he stuck that between three defenders? Talk about Bradford's accuracy from the pocket. Having a career year, that was his... 59th reception of the season. First and ten. It's AP. Oh, he got a good block inside from Surlis. And a 13-yard run. He's down to the nine. Searles made the block. They say the ball is loose. But a couple officials were saying the ball was down, and you can see Adams running the other way with the ball. Now they discuss it on the field. Did Peterson fumble or not? The rule on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Indianapolis. Oh, and Searles had a big block on that line, and Peterson ran for 13, but it's all for not with the fumble. Adams strips him of the ball. You know what happened? They gang tackle. Mike Adams is stripping the ball as Adrian Peterson is going to the ground, and he's able to scoop it up at the bottom of the pile. Mm. Kevin, this is what happens when you don't practice or play for a couple months. You know, it's, it's, I was surprised that when you heard the news earlier in the week that he was going to wait until next week, and then we're at practice on Friday. He was taking some reps, but he just he looks rusty. You know, you look at the cutting, you look at the acceleration. And even the ball security when you're in a pile. You talked about the timing, Rich. That time he got the block. He had the opening, the Peterson cut. But a fumble right there. After a big pass completion of 28 to Rudolph. Set him up in nice field position. Gore in the backfield. First and 10. Frank Gore doiled the block. And again, another tackle made by Anthony Harris. Among others who bring him down at the 16. Gain of seven on first down by Gore. And Kevin, you know, you, you, you look at practice on Friday, nobody was touching him. You know, the, the defensive scout team players, every time 28 got the ball, everyone stepped out of the way. So, I mean, he hasn't really even hit anybody. And that's, that's the problem because you can't, you know, assimilate or duplicate this type of speed and precision in a practice, in a Friday practice. Richie does have a history of fumbling. 24, 24, 24. He also has a history of being a beast with the football, Kevin. Yes. Right now, just doesn't seem like the normal Adrian Peterson. Second three run here by Gore. Initially hit on the play by Sendejo in the secondary. Gain of four up near the 21-yard line and a first down for Indianapolis. They have scored Rich on three of their four previous possessions. And the game plan, Kevin, has been very different than we saw last week from this offense against the Houston Texans. I mean, they're running the football. They're moving the quarterback. Play-action game has been very effective. And they continue to focus on these three tight ends. Coming off the edge, first and ten underneath they go. Doyle on the move. Kendricks is right there. And then they bring him down with Rhodes. He's up to the 34-yard line with a catch and run of 13. Another Colt first down. Well, tonight, the Pope's Choir, the oldest and most heavenly of them all, in the most spectacular setting, only on 60 Minutes. Tonight, only CBS. Kevin Harlan, Rich Gannon, Colts on the move. They've scored in a one-yard touchdown run by Turbin after a very costly Viking penalty and a 27-yard touchdown pass to a little-used tight end in Swope. 
The former college basketball player from Miami. First and ten. It's Gore. Clark with the block and trying to plow him down. He's up to the 37-yard line, hit by a ton on the play. Greenway and others were right there. Joseph with the stop. It's a gain of three to the 36. Well, I just love to watch back like Frank Gore work, Kevin. And look at this, how he's climbing the ladder. Look at those most scrimmage yards in NFL history. I was fortunate to play with one of those players in Marcus Allen. But look at Frank Gore, not far behind. He just continues to chip away at it. Nine more yards. He'll make the top ten. It takes great pride in his preparation and his performance each and every week. Turbin in. With a second down and seven, they blow that dead in mid-motion. False start. Offense, number 62. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Well, for Chuck Pagano, and there's been a lot of speculation in India nationally about him and Ryan Griggs and the GM, but if they win, Rich, they cannot be eliminated from the playoffs. They're hoping Houston loses, which they are now. they got to lose two, and Tennessee loses at least one. Right now, they're losing an arrowhead in Kansas City. And all they can do, Kevin, is take care of their business. And they've got to find a way to get a win here today and make up for that disappointing loss last week at home against Houston. Second down, 12. Turbin in. Come around Clark, but he's got his tight end once again. This time it's Allen. Dwayne Allen with a 13-yard catch on second down and 12 up to the 45. Luck looks like a completely different quarterback today. Yeah, you just watch Dwayne Allen, and the Vikings have to make some adjustments, Kevin. They're not doing a good job handling these tight ends in man-to-man -man coverage. You see Anthony Harris not able to ha handle Dwayne Allen up the seam. Seven catches already by the Colt tight ends this afternoon, including a 27-yard touchdown pass. First and ten. Turbin in. Helping with the block. And Luck tried to guide it incomplete. Looking for Hilton. The coverage on the play by Xavier Rose. Second and ten. Well, you look at Xavier Rhodes, I got a chance to walk by him at practice on Friday. Kevin has got the size, the length, and really the confidence to be a shutdown corner. You mentioned sometimes his over-aggressive style can get him in trouble at times, but he is going to be a good one. He is hes very physical at the line of scrimmage, and he can turn and run with the best of them. He had hit eight in a row until that miss, second down and ten. Get by Clark. They dump it off to Turbin. He got a nice block in there from Harrison. And he takes it with a Hague block past midfield, picking up five. And uh, it'll be second down and five. We are at the two minute warning. Colts on the move and up 17 zip. Coming up on the Verizon halftime report from our CBS studios in New York, JB, Tony, Bart, Boomer, and Coach Cower scores, news, and highlights all coming up on the Verizon halftime report. Santa will be watching on our. Channel 4 here in Minneapolis, WCCO. We welcome them, one of the great television stations in America. Third and five, two-minute warning. Colts and Vikes both three timeouts, and it looked like Griffin may have moved it. Costanzo, draw him, induce him. Neutral zone infraction. Defense, number 97. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. We just watched Everson Griffin, that man on the line of scrimmage, trying to get the jump. On left tackle, Anthony Costanzo. That's the third time today, Rich, that the Colts have picked up a first down on a Viking penalty. Andrew Luck always does a nice job, Kevin, changing up his snap counts. You look at that graphic, it's amazing the, the time of possession. They are wearing out this Minnesota defense. Luck today, 15 at 21, with a touchdown pass to Schroep, his tight end. Gore in, first and ten, Gore hitting the hole hard, and again wrapped up in the secondary by Harris. That's the problem, they're wrapping him up in the secondary, a burst of nine near the 25, the 35-yard line. Gore's had runs of seven and nine, and on this drive, he's gotten Doyle for 13 and Allen for 13 through the air, second and one, Gore. Right around the blocking of the center, Ryan Kelly, looks like they've plowed for the first, down to the 32 of Minnesota. Vikings 
I think they may want to start using some of these timeouts, but Zimmer's just trying to find a way to get a stop right now, Kevin. The Vikings cannot be eliminated mathematically if they lose today, but they do relinquish complete control of their left, destiny. Left, 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 left. In the playoff chase, 10th play of the drive, Turbin is in. They go outside with the first and uh, 10 throw right there. Newman was drilling Rodgers. Second and 10. He's a good one, Rich. He's played a long time in this league, a 38, 14-year veteran. He can play press coverage, and he can play from off. And watch how quickly he closes on this hitch route. Talk about a guy that studies a lot of film during the week, Kevin. He is well dialed in, Terrence Newman. He has really been a, a good resource low, 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 for some low, of the younger low, low. corners, guys like Xavier Rhodes, Trey Waynes, who are learning under a master. Low, low. Low, 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 low. There's a second down and 10 for Luck. With a crumbling pocket, he dumps it off and it's drops. Hilton, another drop. This Colt team drops a lot of them. Kendrick's there, flag is down. Illegal use of hands. Hands to the face. Defense, number Another 99. penalty. It's killed him today. Penalty. Absolutely killed him. second down. Well, it's right here. I mean, you just, you watch the, the matchup, Hunter, on the right tackle, the Raven Clark. He just walks him back in there, but he gets the help of that right hand and arm up into the face mask of Clark. Remember, this drive began with Adrian Peterson's fumble at the eight yard line of Indy. As we mentioned before, if the Colts win today, they cannot be eliminated from the playoffs. Both these teams right in it. But on the outside looking in, first and ten, Turbin is in. Luck, looking him off. They got a nice block right there as Turbin gets the ball from Jonathan Harris, who backed up his man, and they take it with a catch and run down to the ten. A 17-yard catch and run by Turbin. Watch 72 in the block. This is a good look in screen, Kevin, and, it, and it, it's very effective against a very good pass rush of the Minnesota Vikings. You take some of the edge off. You look at the block by Harrison out in front of Turbin. That was well executed and well designed by the Colts. Boy, he just backed up Anthony Barr, didn't he, Rich? Just walked him right to the sidelines. Mm. First and goal. Turbin is in. Turbin. Bill Burrow is way to the six. Kendrick's down there to make the stop. Gain of three on the play. And again, three timeouts for both Indy and the Vikes. And a timeout taken right there. 41 seconds in the second quarter. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. Strike gold, and you could win Super Bowl tickets for life. And by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Coming up next, the Verizon Halftime Report from our CBS studios in New York. Jim and K uh, uh, James and company will have the Verizon Halftime Report coming up next on CBS. I did that without a card, Rich, in case you were wondering. It's too late. I've already read it. You're the best, brother. <laughs> I love working with you. <laughs> Well, we got to wake the kids up here. They got to make some noise here. Turbin in the backfield, a second and goal from the six. Good looking drive began at the eight of Indy. With two timeouts, there's a block by Clark. There's a block by Street. Look at the move, the spin, the corks through the touchdown. Turbin, six yard touchdown run. That was a beauty. The second consecutive touchdown drive over 90 yards for the Colts on the road in many today. Well, that's not going to make Mike Zimmer very happy, Kevin. It's a terrific individual effort by Turbin, but there's some poor tackling, some poor angles of pursuit from the Minnesota Vikings and just a great effort finishing at the goal line by Robert Turbin. Well, this, you can hear a pin drop right now in here. You can hear the boos, I'll tell you that. Vinatieri, 
24 to nothing with a half minute to play in the first half in such an unbelievable dominating first half by the Colts trying to dig their way, spin their way into the playoffs. Rich, I am looking at this statistical page in front of us. The number of plays by the Colts and the number of plays in the first half by the Vikings. Just 12 offensive snaps for the Vikings, Kevin. You compare that to the Colts with 46. It's the largest time of, uh, time of possession differential in the season this year. You look at the time of possession, that's the story in this game right now. Well, you're seeing no other team has had this kind of domination in the first half this year league-wide. League-wide. They've got, they've had the ball for tw over 23 minutes in the first half. The Colts, the Vikings, just a little over six minutes, Kevin. And you don't have every level. Couple hits in there, including by Matthias Farley, a 27-yard return. So the Vikings will get it for a fifth time, Rich. They punted the first three times they had it. Peterson fumbled the last time. And now, with three timeouts and 28 seconds to play in the first half, AP will be on the sideline. It almost kind of takes him out of the game, doesn't it, now, with the 24-7? Well, 24 it does. I mean, he's, he's usually not in there in passing downs anyway. Wow. I mean, the guy that they want in there is Jarek McKinnon. Go. And so, yeah, they, they've got to, got to get back in this game in the second half, Kevin. Down 24 nothing. And McKinnon in, and Bradford to the sideline. Picked off! Picked up by Adams. He had an interception last week, and he gets back up. He got a clock on the play from his secondary mate, Melvin. Takes it down the sideline, and they are in field goal range. It's the first interception by the Colts in a while. More than a couple games. Take your time. Fuck there. We're going to take our time. Well, just keep an eye on Mike Adams. He's working to, to the boundary because he's covering the tight end. Kyle Rudolph in man-to-man -man coverage. And when he sees that Bradford's trying to throw the ball in behind him, he just just drops back. This is a, a force by Sam Bradford at the most inopportune time. I mean, just can't make that throw coming out of your own end. Adams had a pick the game before on the Monday night in the Meadowlands against the Jets. Adams walking off now. That is not a good sign. They say he was down by contact at the 36. So now, with two timeouts and 19 seconds remaining, the Delaware Blue Hen, Mike Adams, comes up with a big pick. I wish I could think of someone else from Delaware. Well, Kevin, he's he's been terrific for, for the Colts. He's been a Pro Bowl player. He makes all the calls on the back end. He's good in man-to-man -man coverage. He's a guy that's very comfortable in run support down around the line of scrimmage. And now he's set up Andrew Luck for another opportunity here, Kevin, with a couple timeouts. First and ten. Gore is in. It's Gore. With a run down to about the 32-yard line, the pile bringing him down. It is a gain of four. The clock continuing to tick. Colts have two timeouts, and Chuck Pagano will... Call it right now with three seconds left. We're going to be back in 30 seconds to finish out the first half here on CBS. 50-yard field goal try by Vinatieri from 50 and beyond. Six of eight after the interception by Adams, and they cash in. Zeros on the clock, and the Indianapolis Colts in a stunner, shutting out the Vikings 27 to nothing. Colts 10 points off two Viking turnovers. The booze cascading down. We take you to New York for the Verizon halftime after this on CBS. Yep, that's our score at halftime. Both teams in playoff contention, but on the outside looking in, the Colts and the Minnesota Vikings. A couple touchdown runs and a touchdown pass. I'd like to remind you, follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. In the return of Adrian Peterson, he fumbled deep in Colt territory, and those are his numbers through one half of football. Yeah, really disappointing, Kevin. I think even more disappointing is the fact that they have, just haven't had any opportunity. Just 13 offensive snaps in the first half. they got to do something to jumpstart this offense are you in the second half. Are you stunned by this game? I really am. I thought the Vikings would come out and really play, 
situation, especially when you consider what was at stake. I'm not surprised to see the Colts really rally from what happened last week, an embarrassing loss at home to the Houston Texans. But my gosh, I, I never thought the Vikings would, would lay an egg like this in the first half. Let's take a look at some of the numbers in the first half. And they are uh, interesting with these halftime adjustments going into the second half now needed by both. Yeah, I, I think if you're the Colts, you've you got to continue to be aggressive and, and take chances and not coast. It's not time to pump the brakes for the Vikings. I jumped the ball. I mean, I, I'd go up tempo. They need more opportunities. And I think it's more of Sam Bradford in the second half, Kevin, as opposed to Adrian Peterson. I think we'll see less and less of Adrian Peterson because of the score. Mike Zimmer has taken that patch off his eye. He's had a torn retina, four surgeries since November 1st. He's got one more remaining. He will not have his vision fully restored, they tell us, the rest of the season. And he's had to switch from prescription to reading glasses to see that call sheet. And he had some double vision out of the right eye without the patch. Told us on Friday he can't sleep or on his back or look up for long periods of time. He really had to adjust the video monitors in his office to watch game tape during the week. So it's been a real hassle, obviously, for Mike Zimmer. He's as tough as they come. Colts, no turnovers, no sacks allowed. 281 yards of offense. Just under 23 and a half minutes time of possession. And away we go. And Patterson will bring it out. He was hit initially. Ayers got him. But the first hit was leveled by Deion King. 20-yard return. Well, it was all Colts in the first half. We've been talking about the time of possession. It's it's amazing, just uh, utter dominance by the Colts. Very efficient. Andrew Luck did, has done a nice job moving around. Very productive on third down. And Kevin, that's what what has hurt the Vikings. They've got to be able to start converting on third down. 0 for three in the first half. With Peterson in first and ten. Nowhere to run. They gain a couple yards on the play, and that's about it. He gets to the 15-yard line. Well, Kevin, here's the thing to keep in mind. Adrian Peterson aside, this is the, the worst rushing offense in football. They've had three different starters at both tackle positions, two different starters at center in both guard positions. They've had no continuity up front, regardless of who the runner has been. Trent Cole made that last tackle. Trent Cole comes right now over to get the quarterback, who dumps it over him in the... Patterson is brought down by Adams, and they pick up 12 on the play. The catch and run takes him out to the Viking 27. And I like the fact that they're trying to jump the ball a little bit here and, and go a little bit up tempo. Sometimes if you're struggling to find your rhythm offensively, this is something that can really help a quarterback in an offense. So see Pat Shermer there with, the, with his play sheets. So he had to make some adjustments when he found out on Friday that AP would be up. At the first and ten, and they pull Searles, who leads the way, and finally brought down in the secondary by Rashawn Melvin. AP picks up four to the 31. Well, we know Adrian Pearson can create his own yards and, and make people miss. I think where he can really help him is in, in the short yardage and goal line situations if they can ever get down inside the red zone. It's where they have struggled, especially last week on the road in Jacksonville. With a second down and six, here comes Bradford. And then he goes. Big time hit by Edwin Jackson on Diggs. Limiting him to a gain of two to the 33. It's his first catch today. Big hit by Jackson, who now with Dequell Jackson out, suspended because of PED problems and uh, flunking the test. He becomes the guy that gets the plays in the helmet. Yeah, he takes on a more significant role. Kevin, you mentioned in the middle of that defense and, and making all the calls and the adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Four, we've got a fly. False, False start. start. Offense number 12. Five yard penalty. Still third down. On the receiver, Charles Johnson. You talk about the struggles the Vikings have had, the, the missed assignments and, and the mental errors. You're just jumping off sides as a receiver. You should be looking inside at the football. I can't even imagine, Kevin, what Mike Zimmer said to his football team in the locker room at halftime. 
I can only imagine some people's ears are still ringing. With Asiata in, third down nine. Underneath, on the move, Johnson brought down by Melvin. They get the first down. They're up to the 38-yard line. On third and nine, a catch and run of 10 by the Vikings. They'll move the chains. Well, he made up for it on the crossing route yes, against man-to-man -man coverage. He just works his way through some traffic and is able to pick up the first down. There's an injury timeout. The player, Rashawn Melvin, walking woozily to the far side. Rich, you know, we've talked about the penalties today for the Vikings. They have been penalized at home more than on the road, almost double the amount of times. And, you know, I think initially, Kevin, it had a lot to do with the crowd noise in this new facility, the excitement, the energy. But as Mike Zimmer said, they haven't been able to pinpoint it. It's just a lack of discipline at times in, in some critical situations. You mentioned before they had to replace the offensive coordinator in early November when Norv Turner resigned, and the interim tag went to Pat Shermer. First and ten. With McKinnon in the backfield, Bradford will drop and go deep, and he's got Thielen. Oh, what a hit! Butler drilled him, flag thrown. Thielen holds on to the ball. 25-yard catch. And he's down right now to the 37-yard line of the Indianapolis Colts. I don't think they're going to give him that catch. Let's see. That ball comes out. Boy, he gets hit. He never sees this one coming as he tries to protect himself at the very end. Oh, you're right, Rich. It did come out. The ruling on the field is an incomplete class. We also have personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 20, contact on the defenseless player, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. So wipes out a 25-yard reception, but because of the penalty, they'll move downfield. And Thielen has no chance here, Kevin. He's just doing everything just to try and hold on to the football. Never really feels Darius Butler coming up in front of him. He is up and walking around, which is a good sign. It's a tough kid. Jarius Wright will take the place of Thielen. He is a tough kid. He's from the area, from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Undrafted out of Minnesota State, the former Mankato State. First and ten. McKinnon in at the back. And Bradford underneath Charles Johnson. He got by one tackler, T.J. Green. He picks up 11, hit by Morrison, the linebacker, with a couple tackles on this defensive side of the Colts on this Viking drive. He's down to the 36. You need, you need a sense of urgency now if you're the Vikings on offense. You didn't do your part in the first half. Bradford looks sharp, Kevin. They're having some success 44. working underneath on 22. these crossing routes. Set. 20. Five in the secondary for the Colts. First and ten, McKinnon. Grabbed by Edwin Jackson and picks up a quick five down to the 31-yard line of Indianapolis. And on this drive, Johnson has caught a couple for 10 and 11. Patterson caught one and ran for 12. So you're right, the shorter pass is rich, although Thielen looked like he was going to have that before he was drilled. Second down and five. Rocko! Underneath they go again, Charles Johnson, and the open field tackle missed right there by Morris. And gaining seven on the play, but Morris tripped him up just enough to bring him down. He's at the 24. And again, the crossing routes starting to work and be effective underneath against this Colts defense. Charles Johnson has caught three of them already here in the second half. And seven, 10, and 11 yards. Bradford on this drive, five of five. First and ten, look out from behind. It's a fumble on the play. It's loose, and Bradford has had three fumbles this season already. And looking like he's got the ball is Henry Anderson of the Colts. Getting Robert Mathis healthy and back in the lineup, Kevin, is a huge boost for this Colts pass rush. 
It's the second turnover by the Vikings in Colts territory. Anderson with Ma Mathis knocking it loose. We're back after the fumble by the quarterback Bradford. From the 33, Colts take over first and 10, Gore. Hit by Greenway, picks up two, gets to the 35-yard line. Let's go back to the fumble moments ago by the Vikings. And left tackle Kevin has been a problem this season for the Minnesota Vikings, T.J. Clemmings. And when he lunges with his hands and his hips go forward, he's usually in trouble. And Bradford just can't hold the ball, knowing that he's got a really good pass rusher back behind him in Robert Mathis, who for years has done a terrific job stripping the ball when he gets near the quarterback. Three sacks for him and a hit right there. Meanwhile, well, Raven Clark has just checked out of the game, and a guy they called up just this past Thursday off the practice guide, Vujinovic, Jeremy Vujinovic, is in. Second down and eight. It's Gore. And he is hit by Kendricks and picks up three on the play. But, Rich, what is interesting to me is that there has not been a single sack allowed by the offensive line with three rookie starters on the right side today. Only the Browns coming in had allowed more sacks than Indy. Isn't that amazing, Kevin? You, you look at, they're, they're bringing players up from the practice squad, and they're lining up and playing in front of Andrew Luck. We talked about all the changes. You know, 34, now 35 different starting offensive line combinations in his 68 games as a starter for the Colts. And these guys right now are playing well. Turbin in third and five. And across the middle, tight end is Doyle. The tackle is made by Sandejo. It's a pickup of three and shy of a first by two. And a punt. Coming up for the Colts. This drives me crazy as I watch it, Kevin. Why You have to ask yourself, why wouldn't Doyle just climb a little bit higher and get two more yards of depth as he ran that crossing route? you got to make sure you get your depth on third down. Sherrills is back. Marcus Sherrills, five punt return touchdowns in his career to this season. McAfee to punt. The Vikings need to score on defense or in on, or, or the kicking game. I said that about the Colts, Kevin. Now in the second half, you've got to go the other way. They've got to do something special because their offense right now is struggling. Raven his arm. Cheryl falls at the 15-yard line. The hang time was 4-6. It was a 43-yard well-placed punt by McAfee, number one in average in the NFL. It won the third. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. The new 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep free to be. And by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Our Chuck Denton, who is from San Diego, went out on Lake Minnetonka yesterday. He shot all that, and he fished, and they didn't catch anything. But Scannon lives out that way. Beautiful lake. First down and 10 from the 15, Bradford, as the Colts don't cash in on the fumble. It's a first down throw. Patterson brought down by T.J. Green. Pickup of 11 on the play. Melvin there as well on the terrific Cordero Patterson, who makes the first down reception. McKinnon is the running back. Well, they get by the... Oh, it's picked off on the play by Kerr! Another turnover, the fourth today, and a flag has been thrown. Let's see what that does to this pick. You get a low hit on the quarterback, I yeah. believe. Yeah, foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Number 96, low hit on the quarterback. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So wipes out the interception, another change of possession, and it gives the Vikings a nice move upfield on Henry Anderson. He's just coming around the edge, and he goes low on Bradford. They'll call mm -hmm. that every time, but Can't Kevin, do it. Bradford was looking to his left to kind of draw the rush, and this initially, when he comes back to try and throw the screen to McKinnon, he never feels nose tackle Zach Kerr. 24. McKinnon in, first and 10. 
Jared McQueen, the call, hit by Morrison, driven down, 47-yard line, and a pickup of six. Morrison makes the stop. Now, let's take a look at the Vikings today, down 27-zip. Uh, they will not be eliminated mathematically, Rich, if they go on to lose this game today, but they do relinquish complete control of their destiny. Second down and four. Out to Rudolph, gets the first down. Adams hits him on the chalk and drives him out to the 46 on a pickup of eight on the play. This is a look at nine teams in the NFC with records of seven and six or better. Yeah, Kevin, this is December football, though. You know, you lose at home 44. to a team like the Colts, and you just you kind of dig your own grave. This is, this is a critical game for the Vikings at this point in the season. Underneath, open is McKinnon with a beat on him, and a tackle was Daryl Morris. And he picks up eight on the short one underneath. And in talking to Sam Bradford on Friday, he mentioned about going no huddle this up-tempo because the Colts have been without Dequell Jackson now for a couple weeks, and he really... They noticed last week they had a difficult time getting lined up without Jackson in there in the middle to direct traffic. With a second down and two and going deep. And for Diggs, coverage by Morris and no flag on the play. It was just underthrown. Stefan Diggs had a step on Daryl Morris. He had to come back for the ball because it was underthrown. Diggs is having a career year. He's just shy of 1,000 receiving yards this season. He is a vertical threat, Kevin. Mm -hmm. They've got to be able to find ways to, to stretch this defense and to push the ball down the field more. Give him some chances because he can go out, go up and make that acrobatic catch. By the way, we've seen no more of Thielen since he took the big hit, third and two. Outside, Rudolph, and it looks like he may have the first down. Adams is on his tail. They pick up two on third and two. Oh, dropped. I don't know. No, they gave it to him. Yeah, he had the ball. I don't know, Ken. He he doesn't have possession of the football. He's he, look. You watch there. It's moving back and forth. I don't know if I if I were the Colts, I may challenge that. Look. Oh, you're right, Rich. See the ball move. That is moving. See that it's moving, and then I don't know if he ever gets that foot down. First and ten. Bradford out of the pocket. Comes it off to McKinnon. And a quick tackle made by Adams. The leading tackler on this defense to the 31. And when Jackson was there as well. Jackson all over the joint. Brad, you know, you don't think of Bradford as a mobile quarterback, mm -hmm. but he's done a much better job here the last couple weeks moving around in the pocket, creating some time, using his legs to give those receivers a chance to win downfield. He had limited practice this week with the right shoulder injury. Go to Asiata outside and second down and five. He broke one tackle at Jackson, takes it down inside the 15. Brought down by Morrison, put him at the 10. Nice catch and run by Matt Asiata. 21-yard gain. He's just going to outflank the linebacker. Matt Asiata, he makes a good grab. Edwin Jackson late to get to the flat. Put him at the 11. First and 10. Bradford. Johnson with a nice open field tackle right there by Vontae Davis, the two-time Pro Bowler. He's down to the six on a gain of four. Always liked the way you look at Bradford. He throws a very catchable ball. He's got great touch, allows receivers to get into the transition of the run. It's a second down and six for Bradford. Sure is the block, but they got him and they bring him down. A ninth sack this season for Eric Walden. Coming through, he has been the most dynamic pass rusher this year. It's the second sack for the Colts. They push him back to the 14. Left tackle has been a problem all season for the Vikings. You just didn't see Walden beat the left tackle around the corner. First, it was Matt Khalil. He struggled early. They put in Clemmings. That didn't work out, so they went out and signed Jake Long. He struggled and was eventually placed on IR. He went back to Clemmings at the end of November. He ranks dead last Look among out. tackles, according to Pro Football Focus, with a pass block grade of 27.2. Walden smells blood, third and 13. They double Walden this time. That's out of the reach of the lunging Patterson with the coverage in the vicinity by Daryl Morris in the Colt secondary. Now, fourth, and here comes the field goal unit for the Vikings, down 27 to nothing. 
you know, if they had a situation, Kevin, where they're inside a two or three yard line, you might think about going for it. But in this situation, just a the right thing to do. You still need a field goal to tie this game. It's Kai Forbath. They signed him after they lost hope on their previous kicker. With the boot right here from 32 yards away. It is up and in. He replaced Blair Walsh in November. And another field goal for Corbett. That's the 29th ranked defense in the NFL. Better the Colts. NFL on CBS is now on CBS All Access. Stream your local games live. Go to cbs.com slash NFL now to try it for free. That's what's so surprising. But then again, you look what the Vikings are ranked offensively. Rich, they're, they're 31st in the league. Yeah, it's amazing, Kevin. It's really been... With the five and trail by Sendejo. Bad decision. Should have left that one in the end zone. All right, our third quarter clock at 347 in Minneapolis. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by K Jewelers. For 100 years, every kiss begins with K. And by the new film Sing in theaters this Wednesday. Our producer Ken Mack and our director Mark Grant getting some good pictures. The festiveness of the Twin Cities from the 12. First and 10. It's Gore and he is hit by Chad Greenway on a gain of four. The AFC South. Well, it's very interesting. Osweiler has been benched in the game against Jacksonville. Texans trail. Tennessee is trailing at Arrowhead. And the Colts are winning. We could have a three-way tie at 7-7 seven and seven with those three at the end of week 15 with two to play after today. Wow. Well, nobody wants to win a division. <laughs> so, second down and six. It's Gore, Doyle leading block, and up to about the 19-yard line with a gain of three in the play. Greenway was there. Also uh, a hit by Kendricks. Luck has dropped back 24 times to pass today. Not a single sack, but Rich, look at He has had more success in the pocket. The last five games only sacked nine times. The previous eight, 31 sacks allowed by this offensive line. And I think it says a lot, Kevin, for Joe Philbin, their offensive line coach. The job that he has done really with a, you know, a, a group of young players. Three rookies started today's game. They're guys that have pulled up off the practice squad or getting snaps. Third and a short three, luck, here comes Kendricks, there goes the ball, it's another first down reception. Caught by the backpedaling rookie Rodgers. He picks up eight on third and a short three, and he's up two with a player down for the Vikings. He's up to the 27-yard line, 28-yard line of the Colts. 2.22 in the third, injury timeout from U.S. Bank Stadium. Right knee issue with Tom Johnson. He was a final cut by the Colts back in 06. Undrafted player. Also, just to update Thielen, the receiver in concussion protocol right now for the Vikings. First and 10. Gore is in. Gore gets the handoff. And squirts free. And Stefan will make the stop after a gain of five. And he's up to the 33. You know, Frank Gore never knows how many carries he's going, he's going to get in the game this is a very pass heavy offense but today Kevin they're, they're leading on their veteran back a little bit more 23 carries already for 89 yards not a lot of explosive runs at this point in his career but he's a guy that can still smack it up in there and wear down the defense eight 1,000 yard seasons for Gore second down five Gore again blocked by Harrison and he picks up four. He's up to the 38. Let's take you to New York and James Brown. All right, talk about being versatile. Yeah, Ty Montgomery, the second-year player, converted receiver to running back. 13 carries, 154 yards. He takes that one in. 2010, Green Bay is up over Chicago. All right, back to Kevin and Rich. And Rodgers is making a case, I think, a late run for the MVP in the NFL. And that team in Green Bay is moving. Without a running game, yes, Kevin, isn't it right. amazing? You have receivers playing running back. You know you have some issues, but Aaron Rodgers can make up for a lot of your deficiencies. We got the first down. Turbin, he runs outside, cut in the corner, and dives ahead near midfield. Hit by Sandejo. 
Got some blocking on the right side where those three rookies are starting today for the Colts. It's a pickup of 12 and a first down for Indy at the 50. Kevin, the three rookies are playing well, especially in the running game. They're doing a good job at the point of attack. They're getting up on the second level, and they're gaining confidence as they go. That should do it for the third quarter. Colts coming in 6-7. and seven. Rich, where was this performance last week in that big game against division rival Houston in Indy? Well, they were disappointed, Kevin, but they're not discouraged. This is a this is a well-coached team. It's a tough football team mentally. You knew they were going to respond. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Touchdown pass to Swope, the uh, tight end from Miami for Indianapolis. It's a first and ten. White 90! Turbin is in. We begin the fourth quarter. And Lecku has not been set. Going deep. Oh, and he's got their set. That is a touchdown. And the dagger. A 50-yard strike in the second touchdown pass thrown today by Luck. And they beat Anthony Harris. Well, it all gets sets up with a play-action fake, and then you look at the inside receiver in the slot. What a terrific route by Philip Dorsett. He gets up on the safety, and look at the separation between Dorsett and the safety, Sandejo. Dorsett with his second touchdown reception of the season. Luck has now thrown 27 touchdown passes this year, and Vinatieri nails another. Five seconds into the fourth, and the Vikings are down in a hole they probably can't get out of. 34-3, the Colts. Week 15 continues later today on CBS, and for some of you on Fox, then tonight, Sunday Night Football, NBC, and then tune in tomorrow, Monday Night Football on ESPN and Westwood One Radio. Boomer Esiason and I will be in the nation's capital. Panthers, Redskins, Patterson will take it out. And swerves his way into the grasp of Dion King. 36-yard return. Andrew Luck with two touchdown passes today. It's amazing, Kevin, when you keep him clean and you give him some time in the pocket to move around and make some plays. Very effective. 20 of 20. 7, 248 yards. This was the big one. The shot off a of play action down the field to the speedy Philip Dorsett. Dorsett's only catch today, and this is without Moncrief, who they thought was a big loss in the receiving core. They saw the smile on Lex's face. That says it all. And remember, Dorsett, Kevin, had a rough day last week against the Texans. He put a couple on the ground. He had a couple drops. It was a first and ten for Bradford. He's got Rudolph the tight end, and the tackle made by Edwin Jackson and Morrison. It's a gain of seven. Rich, the Colts with touchdown drives today of 52, 88, 91, and 92 yards. They metic meticulously just went to work, Kevin, just surgically dissecting this Vikings defense. The other second down and three. Here comes Sam Bradford. He didn't practice this week with some shoulder issues. Limited practice, in fact. He has a gain of five right there. And the tackle made by Mathis. And the catch was made by McKinnon. Well, you see Adrian Peterson on the sidelines. Not a lot he can do at this point, Kevin. And this isn't, isn't the part of, the, of his game where he really thrives in the passing game. It's a first and ten. And up the middle, dropped. Rudolph, coverage on the play by Morrison. They went deep three times last week. The Vikings did something they had not done that much of, Rich, against Jacksonville. But they just haven't had the chance to really do that with any kind of success this afternoon. And that really sums up the, the kind of day it's been for this Vikings offense, Kevin. You look at Kyle Rudolph. He's he's a short-handed tight end. Lion. Guy's very reliable. He drops one. With a second down and ten for Bradford. Here they come from Cole on the side. It's a quick hitter, and it's caught by Diggs, who stays on his feet, and Morris wrestles him out of bounds. He fought for the first down, and he acquired it to the 49 of Indianapolis. A catch and run of 11 on second and 10. Diggs. It's a, it's a terrific effort because you watch the hit that he takes from Darius Butler. Butler's been flying around, Kevin, today. He's 
had a couple big hits on these Viking receivers. Won't go. With McKinnon in the backfield, first and ten for Bradford. And deep, good catch made by Rudolph. Right over the outstretched arms of T.J. Green. 23-yard catch down to the 26 of the Colts. Nice throw by Bradford. This is why Bradford has the highest completion percentage in the league so far this season. He can, he can thread the needle. The first and ten, they go outside. This is right. The beat on him across the way is Daryl Morris and limits him to a gain of two to the Colt 24. Bradford through the air, 22 of 28, 200 yards, a pick. The Vikings have turned it over three times today. A fumble by Peterson at the eight of the Colts. A pick and a fumble forced by Mathis. Second down, eight on the sideline looking for Patterson. Coverage on the play by Melvin to New York and James Brown. Picking him up, putting him down. All right, check this out. Nice return here by Marquise Lee. He returns this one 100 yards. The first kickoff return in nine years for Jacksonville. Remember, Brock Osweiler got benched in the first half. Tom Savage has come in. Jacksonville is beating the Texans 20 to 8. Boy, that was Kevin Harlan. Down the field he comes. That will be my guy, Kevin Harlan. Back to Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> down the stretch they come. <laughs> Third and eight. How about that, though? The Texans after that big win in Indy last week, struggling at home against Jacksonville. Third down and eight. Oh, they got him, and they bring him down. T.Y. McGill, first sack of the year. Rub that belly. Third sack of the day by the Colt defense. And the former Seahawk comes up with a big play, and he knocks him back to the Indianapolis 33. They're just working inside on the left guard, and that's not the kind of form you're expecting from Alex Boone. Just gets up on his toes, and McGill beats him right back underneath and has a straight line to the quarterback. Kai Forbath has gone 11 of 11 since he replaced Blair Walsh. He's already hit a field goal today. This would be the longest of the year tried by him. 51 yards, and it is good. Forbath, 12 of 12 since becoming a Viking in early November. But T.Y. McGill, during the holidays, fill it up, rub it hard, 11.57 in the fourth. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Walmart. Find gifts, groceries, and more this season. Progressive, handing off big savings to you. And by Marmot. Fall in love with the outside. All right, Mr. Rand McNally. McNally, where is this being taken? Where was this shot taken in the Twin Cities? Mall of America? MOA, brother. Mall of America. The world famous Mall of America. Even gave you a hint. Here's the kickoff by Forbath. It is over the head of T.Y. Hilton, who will leave it in the end zone and out to the 25-yard line with the first and 10 on the touchback on Friday, December 30th. Christian McCaffrey and the Stanford Cardinal take on Mitch Trubisky and the North Carolina Tar Heels in the Sun Bowl. Two Eastern, Friday, December 30th on CBS. And if you're Chuck Pagano at some point, Kevin, you probably have to have the discussion. This is most likely will be the last series for Andrew Luck. I think you got to get him out of there and get Scott Tolzien in at some point. You don't want your star quarterback in a game like this taking any unnecessary hits he doesn't have to take. Luck has played in 12 of the 13 games. One game he didn't play was Thanksgiving because of concussion protocol against Pittsburgh. Here's a handoff to Gore on first and 10. He's nearing 100. Brought down by Sendejo and a pickup of six right there for Frank Gore. He's got one 100-yard game this season. He's got 98 for the day, and the Colts have only had one 100-yard rusher in the last 63 games played. It's amazing, right? You look at the success that they have had, Kevin, and they've done it behind a patchwork offensive line. And I'd really, if you're going to look for a game ball today, I think it goes to the offensive line of the Colts. I agree. I mean, they have really played well up front. This is one of the best defensive fronts in football. They lead the National Football League in sacks with their front four. And Andrew Luck has been clean the entire day. 
With a second down and four, this is Gore. And they jump on him at about the 33-yard line on a gain of two. That should put him right at 100 yards. Rich, this is the number two defense in pro football, number two in points allowed, and at home in an important go, game, the Colts have dropped 34 on him. Really, it's just it's, it's mind-boggling. It is, Kevin, and I just think that you know they came out that they were a little flat. The Colts had an excellent game plan. They just did a terrific job mixing the run and pass, and the passing game was really the short throws underneath to the tight ends, and the Vikings had absolutely no answer. Third and two. Colts have been four and four on these kind of plays today. He's being chased by Robinson, and it was caught by Hilton, but maybe shy it was of the first down on a gain of about a half yard. Did not get enough. A good effort by T.Y. Hilton, making himself available on the boundary. You see the tight end, Jack Doyle, he's falling out of bounds. It's going to be close. I think you're would right, you, Would Kevin. you he's ask for a, a little spot? Bit short. Would you challenge the spot on that, Rich? I don't know. Would that be rubbing it? Well, look, he's, he's got, got the, the flag out. Why not, I suppose, right? Do I throw it? Yep, you just throw it, and that's what he did. Can't take it with you. No, I can't take it with you. <laughs> Look, he's, 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 he's helping him with the spot. The officials love that. I think That's you missed right. it by a good two feet. The more you can do, Kevin. That's what I say. You know, just you, you got to coach them all up. You also got to coach up the officials sometimes. Indianapolis is challenging the rule of the field of the ball being short of the line to game. Watch where he catches it. This is Hilton with the grab. Time up. Chuck Vagano and the Colts a challenge a spot by Jerome Boger's crew on the sideline and a catch by T.Y. Hilton and a possible first down with the necessary yardage. Let's see what the call is. After reviewing the play, the rule on the field has been changed to a first down. <laughs> the tip of the football crossed the 35-yard line. Indianapolis is not charged a timeout. Hilton has three receptions all coming on third down and converting to a first down today for Indy. Yeah, I love the reaction of Chuck Pagano. You see him right there. He's helping the officials out. He's going to stick his hand in there. He's telling them where to spot the ball. Think it's not important to him, Kevin? They're fighting. They're clawing at six and seven. And he knows what a win like this on the road can do for his football team with two to go. Well, we know there's been some speculation about his job, Rich, and uh, that of the general manager, Ryan Grigson. You know, I, I think the big thing, Kevin, if they can keep Luck upright, I mean, that's the, I mean who wouldn't want to coach Andrew Luck? They just got to make sure that they clean up their protection and take the hits off their quarterback. Yeah, the first and ten, this is Gore. We should tell you that Jim Ursay gave Pagano a contract extension in January and Grigson a contract extension in January. Gain of one right there. I'd like to remind you that Wednesday on CBS, the bosses are back. Don't miss the Undercover Boss season premiere event. Wednesday at 8, 7 Central. Only on CBS, and in this holiday season, we'd like to extend our good wishes and a speedy recovery for the legend here in the Twin Cities, Sid Hartman, who just uh, is recovering from uh, breaking a hip. He had some surgery, and he's been around. He's over 90. What is he, 95, Rich? He's amazing, Kevin. He is, he is still a workaholic. He had some surgery, and he's probably watching us today. Happy holidays, Sid. We hope you get... Well, soon, Turbin slipping through the grasp that time of Kendricks into the secondary, brought down by Newman, picks up five to James in New York. All right, Tony, we'll see your best Kevin Holland on this one. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay. All right, four-yard catch right here by Odell Beckham. One-handed stab catch for the touchdown. 17-6, Giants are up. Look at that dance move. Looks like Rich Gannon right there. Rich Gannon would do that, Tony? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that is so right. That was a Rich Gannon move right there. Just Good once call, I want to see Odell Beckham Jr. Good. hand the ball to the official. Just <laughs> once. <laughs> Third down and four. Luck with Turbin in the backfield. Robert Turbin. And from behind, another tackle made by Anthony Harris. He's got to be close to double-digit tackles today. It's a gain of two right there for Robert Turbin, who began his career with Seattle. The gain is up to the 43, and here comes the punting unit. McAfee and company for the Colts. Deep back to get this is uh, the ever-dangerous Sherrills, Marcus Sherrills. 
Didn't play last week. Had a rib injury, but is back out there for the Vikes today. What has got to be as disappointing a loss as they have had all season. McAfee. A hit. No yellow. Fair caught at about the 16-yard line on a 41-yard punt. Luck with two touchdown passes. Turbin, two touchdown runs. 746 in the fourth. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Subway. Search for better. And by national mortgage lender Quicken Loans. Home by Refi Power. Look at the guys in the background. You got them drinking like Bloody Marys. <laughs> They're going like on their fourth and fifth. And then you got she's seen enough sleeping today, beauty. Yeah, she she's, has seen enough. Uh, I think a lot of Viking fans have. This has been totally unexpected. The team that won last week in the conversation in the playoffs. Bradford first and ten. Underneath again he goes. Patterson on the cross. Upended by Green on the play. He gets with a gain of two up to the 18-yard line of the Vikes. Bradford was traded here September 3rd for a first this year and a fourth next year. She'd say a first coming up, second down and eight. With Philadelphia, there's McKinnon. And he has a key mares around his waist and bringing him down, dragging him down at about the 24 and a gain of six. And Kevin Bradford's not the problem with this offense. I mean, he has been very productive this year. You mentioned the completion percentage through just three interceptions coming into today's game. Only Brady has thrown fewer and with two, and he's been very effective. And playing behind what I said is a patchwork offensive line. They've had three different tackles, offense, a left tackle and a right tackle, two different guards uh, on either side of uh, the center, and two different centers play. So there's been so much change up front. They haven't had Adrian Peterson. Had to change coordinators after week seven. There's a, there's a, there's a lot that's going on around the quarterback, and, and it has impacted Sam Bradford. I think he has handled it well. McKinnon on that third and two got the first. So here's a first down, and it's to McKinnon once again. With a beat on and a tackle made by Milton on the near sideline after a gain of three. As we've told you before, even if they lose, the Vikings are not eliminated mathematically. But they do give up all control of their destiny. Loco! Second down and seven. Moving up niftily, here comes Bradford. Down he goes, hit by Walden. That's another sack. He's got two sacks today. Fourth authored by this Indy defense. Walden's got a couple in his back pocket. This is a good effort play by Eric Walden. He doesn't give up. Keeps his eyes on the quarterback the whole time. He leads the Colts in sacks, and I can see why. He's got 10. I think this is the first time in his career he's had double-digit sacks. Third and 11. And if they go, this is Patterson. Alden's got a handle on him, and they bring him down, gain of five, and about five yards shy of the first down. It is fourth down. They will stay out there. You know, the magic number for the Vikings is 36. You know, they're, per they're a perfect 6-0 and when he, Bradford throws it 36 times or less. They're 0-6 when he throws it more than 36 times, and right now he's he's coming up on 35, Kevin. Rocco! Fourth and six for Bradford, looping it for Patterson, and almost hauled it in. No flag, coverage on the play by rookie free agent Christopher Milton from Georgia. Played it well on downs, it goes back to the Colts. Well, we lost a wonderful member of our broadcasting family on Thursday, the passing of Craig Sager after a long battle with leukemia. Sager spent more than 30 years with Turner Sports, impeccable reporting, great report with the biggest stars in the NBA, his trademark colorful wardrobe. You saw that picture moments ago, that was from the ESPYs this past summer, just before his third transplant. He was part of the CBS Sports family as well, with our coverage of the NCAA tournament. Craig Sager, days before he died, inducted into the Sports Broadcasting Hall of Fame. He was 65. Worked with him for 20 years. Enjoyed every minute of it. He's a good man. Just over five to go here. There's a new quarterback in there and that is Scott Tolzien who hands off to Todman who swerves his way into the secondary and down to the 18-yard line hit on the play by Harris and he picks up 12 on the first down run. That is 
Jordan Todman, who had, by the way, earlier this season in Green Bay, a 99-yard kickoff return for a Colt touchdown. How about this? The Colts have won in Green Bay, Rich, and they've lost in Jacksonville. Kind of a feel for what their season's been like. Kind of up and down, Kevin. That certainly reflects in their their record right now. They'll, they'll be 7-7 seven and seven after this one at 500. But the good news is, is when you look at what's happening today with the Texans and with the Titans, they're going to be right there in the thick of things with a couple games to go. Top in first and 10. Again, another nice block by Jonathan Harrison. And it's a gain of a yard out of the 17-yard line. Tolzien in that performance against the Pittsburgh Steelers on Thanksgiving, which was a loss for the Colts. 23 of 37, 216, a touchdown and a pick. Kevin, you and I saw a lot of Scott Tolzien as a, as a rookie. Cut his teeth with the Packers. Yep. And a uh, player that they really liked. University of Wisconsin. He was a good quarterback for the Badgers. You're in a good situation. I mean, if you're a backup quarterback, you'll play 10 years behind Andrew Luck. For the second down and nine, Todman. Digging in there. You know, the Colts, Rich, are playing as well on the road as they played poorly last week at home in that big divisional game against Houston. Isn't it amazing how it things I'm, can I'm change stunned. so dramatically in one week? And look, and we visited with Chuck Pagano last night, Kevin, he said they're very disappointed, but not discouraged. This is still a good football team. And I think the in other interesting comment we heard last night was from Andrew Luck. Say, yep, he, yep. he said, look, I think people will be pleasantly surprised with how our offensive line plays. He was very confident that these young guys up in front, especially the center the, and the right guard and right tackle, would play well against a very good Vikings front four. And off here to Josh Ferguson, who comes in. And is leveled by Joseph after a gain of a yard. Today, Gore goes over 100. He's going to possibly reach 1,000 yards. He's done it eight times, all with San Francisco. He may do it now with the Colts as he continues to climb the ladder of historical markers. Gore, San Francisco's all-time leading rusher, 10 years with the Niners. He is a real pro, Kevin. Mm. That's all I can say about him. I mean, he's just... He's as tough as nails. How about him talking last night in the meeting about young players oh. with, the, with the texting and the tweeting and the Facebook after losses? He said it drives him crazy when he gets on the bus after the game. He wants to start smashing phones. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's the real deal. Fourth and seven. It's Ferguson who's a rookie free agent out of Illinois. Tried to turn the corner, couldn't it on downs. It will go over to the Minnesota Vikings. Gore. Gore wants to be a scout, he told us. He also wants to get into some scouting after his pro football days are over. We've reached the two-minute warning, and the Colts are going to get back to 500. Nothing short of a miracle that Peterson is able to come back and play. Here's a first and ten after the Colts give it up on downs, and he just gets it away. It's off to McKinnon. And with the beat on him and the tackle was T.J. Green in the secondary. 13-yard catch and run. But AP didn't come back three months after knee surgery, Rich. Well, there's no question, Kevin. He's a tough guy. He just never really got a chance to get started. You know, with a back like Adrian Peterson, he needs touches. He needs some opportunities early. And he was never able, able to get that. Here is McKinnon. Brought down by Edwin Jackson. He did have a 13-yard run. AP did in this game. But he also fumbled at the 8-yard line of the Colts as the Vikings at a very interesting time of the game were moving in. Got stripped by Mike Adams. But, you know, the problem, Kevin, they had 13 offensive plays in the first half. Second down and 8. And for today, 29-37. Dumps it off. It's McKinnon underneath once again. Making a couple tackles and brought down in the secondary here by Matthias Farley. He's a rookie out of Notre Dame. He was waived by Arizona this season. 15-yard catch and run. Timeout. Timeout taken as Green is injured with 103 to play. I'd like to let you know that when uh, this game concludes, we'll take you to Rock and Arrowhead in Kansas City for the Chiefs and Titans in a seven point game with about uh, six and a half to play. There's, after this one. There's two teams right there, Kevin, and two coaches that are absolutely committed to running the football. You, know, you look at the, the Chiefs with Andy Reid and the Titans with Mike Malarkey. Mike Malarkey's done a nice job this season with the Titans. Taking the place of Ken Wisenhut, middle of last season. 
after Wisnett was fired. Here's a first and ten. Outside, incomplete, as they were aiming for Jarius Wright. With the coverage across the way by a couple, including the two-time Pro Bowler, Vontae Davis, who we have not talked about a lot today, Rich, because they've kind of thrown away from him. Yeah, they, they haven't really been able to get anything going, really, in the passing game, and certainly not outside the numbers, Kevin. Most of the work that Bradford has done has been in the middle of the field. Second down and ten for Bradford. They've got three timeouts to work with. Here's Patterson. And he is free. Some missed tackles here. Finally brought down by Farley. It's a 19-yard catch and run by the speed merchant Patterson. Takes it down to the 37-yard line of Indy. He's electric with the ball in his hands. It just, it's just been a challenge to, to get him the ball a little bit here the last couple of years. First and ten for Bradford. By McGill downfield for Rudolph, and he plows his way into three awaiting Colts. Takes a fourth to bring him down. Hit by Adams, hit by Milton. Gain of 24 on the play. Well, Rudolph catches the ball well in a crowd, doesn't he? He's got he does. That huge catch radius, second on the team with 58 receptions. Here's the way the South is looking right now. Houston is losing, Tennessee is losing, and the Colts, we're going to give them a win to go to 7-7. Seven and seven. At the end of the day, with two weeks to play, Pagano could be in a three-way tie for first, like he was at the beginning of last week's game at home against Houston. But keep in mind, Kevin, the Colts have already lost twice to the mm -hmm. Houston Texans. You know, if it gets down to a tiebreaker, that's it's going to hurt him. That loss last week at home to Houston still lingering. You now be down in Houston next Christmas Eve, coming up in a week. Christmas Eve in Houston with Rich. We'll dress like Santa. <laughs> First and ten. Oh, he's hit from behind. It may have been Mathis who again got at the cock right throwing arm of Brantford. Now the NFC looks this way. We're going to get the Vikings the loss. They'll drop to 500. Green Bay is winning. Redskins play tomorrow night against Carolina and the rest that you see in the NFC. I believe that'll be four straight, Kevin, for the Packers, correct? They are red hot right now. They are the team everybody right. is watching. Yep. And I say that as unbiasedly as I possibly can. Second down and ten. Up the middle, they come again. Zach Kerr! With another sack, it's the fifth allowed by the Viking offensive line today. That'll take us to zeros, and the Colts come up with a big win on the road in Minneapolis. The Colts, no turnovers. The Colts, no sacks allowed. 37 minutes of total time of possession. Luck and Indy come through. Coming up next, bonus coverage. The Titans and the Chiefs. For Rich Gannon, Kevin Harlan, so long from Minneapolis, you've been watching the NFL on CBS.